This is one of my favorite devices in the shop. And this could kick it to the curb. Hello everybody, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I am sitting here with two variable transformers, sometimes known as Variax. I was originally in the market for a Variac and uh, I was looking at various Chinese made ones and they're, they're, these are made in China also, so not disparaging against China, but um, looking at just some various random no-name ones on eBay and Amazon and what I ran into uh, through looking at some reviews and stuff like that is that a lot of them had some very poor construction and were unsafe and wired improperly and all that kind of stuff and I got a little bit put off by them. And somehow doing some searching, I came across Circuit Specialist, which is a company that I definitely know um, from having some of their other equipment, and uh, decided to reach out to them and see if they would send a review unit. And they sent me this one, and I ripped the entire thing apart. I tested the voltage and the current and everything on it, and uh, just absolutely loved it. And at the time I did that, I knew that they were actually working on this one, which has a couple of extra features that you might find interesting. And so when they asked me if I would take a look at it, I jumped at the chance. So let's take a look at some of the differences before I get into this one particularly. Um, this thing has a red color that I absolutely love, but I think they did a good job by not making it red. The reason why I say that is because the market is flooded with red ones that look exactly like this, but don't have the same quality when you tear them apart. The soldering isn't as good, the wiring isn't as good, the copper didn't look as good, Just they just didn't look as good. Uh, you know, the knob wouldn't work in, in the same fashion as this one and stuff like that. So just, uh, there were a lot of them that flooded the market that looked like this one and they were just junk. Uh, now this one over here is kind of a cool like it's not quite a matte black not quite a gloss black uh you know just kind of an in-between black semi-gloss maybe not even quite that um but it just has a really kind of cool sleek look now i do think this thing looks awesome and everybody who walks in the shop uh it's one of the first things they look at and they want to know what it is and what it does and this thing will be a little bit more of a wallflower but uh it's got a couple of features that may make that trade-off worth it by far and away, the number one big change on this thing is that it has a two row display and we're going to get into that in a minute. But this thing not only tells you what voltage it's outputting, but how much current as well, which can stop you from trying to overdrive this thing and letting you know exactly where you're at in terms of your current consumption. Uh, then on top, they've also gotten rid of the gauge, which I think makes sense. Um, YouTuber Make Me Lab pointed out that I incorrectly assumed that this gauge on the top was supposed to be telling me voltage and it wasn't it's actually telling me percent so in other words the idea is that when this is at 100 uh you're getting 100 percent of the voltage is coming out of the wall or above or below um and this one they've gone ahead and done away with that gauge which i think is a good idea because uh you know there's really no reason for it it's an analog device uh, with a digital readout and so depending on the voltage in the wall uh this knob 100 is going to mean something different depending on what your local voltage is and so uh, because of that you want to rely on this anyway and in this one at least i found that it was extremely accurate so uh, we're going to take a look at this thing for its own merit this job is not to compare these two together this one is going to be discontinued so if you want a very act in the future this is the one you're going to want so when you first turn this thing on you'll notice that it goes through a little bit of a pattern and some things flash around and it checks some things and all of a sudden it comes back uh, to more of a stable readout and so I think that's pretty interesting because that tells me that this isn't just a gauge that there's some kind of microcontroller going on in there um, now another thing I think is really interesting about this is that it can tell you the voltage that it's at even when there's nothing plugged in which I think is awesome because it allows you to set exactly the voltage you want before you plug your device in. So if you're questioning things a little bit, and again, as the input voltage varies, the output voltage would vary a little bit. Um, if you wanna be set at exactly 56 volts, you can do that before you plug something in. Now, what'll be interesting is how much that drops down once I put a load on it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop it. Actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's just plug it in hot and see what happens. Um, so I've got a drill here, which is gonna draw decent amount of current. This is a big old mud mixing drill. Uh, so we're just gonna plug it in hot and see if it stays at 56. Yeah. 
And as you can see, uh, it dropped by a volt for a second and then was immediately right back up at 56. So I'm going to make an entirely different analysis at 57. Um, again, within reason, I, I think it's probably plus or minus a percent or two. Um, but I'm going to make an entirely different video showing you all the different things that this thing can do. Uh, not a sponsored video, just one I've always wanted to make. Um, you know, one of the uses for this thing is something like motor control. So if I turn this on, you can see that I can actually adjust the speed of that drill. Now, again, if you're doing something like this and you're putting any kind of load on it, you want to make sure that it's spinning enough that it can cool itself down. But you can actually do things like speed control with this thing, which I think is pretty awesome. Now, I'm sure people would go nuts if I made them listen to a drill for the entire video, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I hooked up an incandescent light and my Kiwitz multimeter, and uh, we're going to just check quickly the accuracy of this thing. Now, remember, this thing does not have a decimal point on the uh, volts, and it has uh, one-tenth of an amp on the amperage side. So, you know, we could look off by a volt or two just because of the difference in the precision, but we're going to go ahead and bring this up to, let's bring it to like 40 volts, somewhere in that range. So at 40 volts, yeah, 41, 41, 40, 40, um, we are pretty bang on there. Let's go up to uh, 60, let's go up to 70. At 70 volts, we are bang on 70 and 70. It says here that we're drawing 0.1 amps. Uh, we're gonna go up to, let's go to 100. At 100, we're reading 100. You can see we're creeping up toward 101 there. I back it off at 100. And come on. 99, 99. So it looks pretty good at that range. Let's go up to 120. And we're seeing 120 and 120. If you can still see my meter, and then we'll go up a little past that. Just see how high it goes. <laughs> 135. 142 is the max, and we're not going to drive that incandescent any more than we absolutely have to. But as you can see, through the entire range, uh, we'll go even lower. Let's bring it down to 15 volts or something like that. Uh, through the entire range, it seems like we're at least on pace, um, you know, between these two meters. All right, so we've got the unit safely unplugged, and we're going to dig in here just a little bit and see what she looks like. Now, I will point out that I have an early production model, so I'm sure... Things are subject to change a little bit, and I'm guessing some of the manufacturing processes will get a little smoothed out as we go. But um, Circuit Special has been making these things for a long time. This is just a revision. Uh, it's iterative. So um, as we come in here, we look, and we can see that it appears that this thing is grounded. Now, I don't remember that on the last one. Let me, let me get this where you can see it. Uh, we do want to check to make sure that that is chassis grounded, especially with... Uh, all this seems like maybe a powder coating on there. Um, so let's go ahead and grab the meter back. All right, so I've got the meter here and we are set in beep beep mode. And so if we go on here, you can see that we are grounded right there. Um, so we're grounded to the chassis, grounded up here. And I'm expecting that if I can find a place to check, we're grounded back there. So um, overall the chassis is grounded, that's what you wanna see. And I wouldn't expect anything less from these guys. All right, we're gonna take a look at the inside of this thing. You can see you've got the switch up here and it is soldered and those lugs are soldered uh, pretty well. I don't see any kind of flyaways or anything like that. It looks good. You've got your standard uh, residential 20 amp outlet right here. Um, and it is attached with screws, not using backstabbing or anything like that. And you've got some kind of big copper lug here on the ground and then it's soldered to that copper lug. Uh, and then all of our connections for the fuse look good. As we said, it's grounded already. This uh, connection way over here is soldered well. Um, I ripped the other one apart. There's not really a lot interesting to look at on the other one. If you really want to see what the inside one looks like, I suggest taking a look at my other video. Now, the meter itself is not something I can find uh, standalone. I know that was something people asked me questions about last time, was finding a meter that could display um, AC voltage down as low as this one did and so it's pretty impressive i don't know where they got it from but um seems to work really really well uh, but i do have a picture of it in case you're looking for one just like it 
So in conclusion, I really do like the direction that circuit specialists took this variable transformer. Um, you know, they added a sleek, distinctive look. They added the amp meter. They changed the controls to make them a little bit more intuitive. And they did that while keeping the same good quality innards that the other one had. And I think that's pretty impressive. They also did it keeping it at basically the same price. Uh, so you can get this one for about 160 bucks on either Amazon or their website. If you want something a little bit cheaper there is also a uh, 500 va model that's about a hundred bucks available at least on amazon and probably on their website soon um so if you have an existing one from circuit specialist i don't know that i would actually go out and buy this one as an upgrade but if you're in the market for one uh considering how much junk is out there on the market knowing that you're going to get something like this that's quality um with a company that stands behind it and stuff like that i think it's pretty impressive so i would definitely give it a buy if you're in the market for a variable transformer so hey thanks for watching and have a great day